Hi everyone, welcome to today's AMA. With me today, we have Nilesh, who's one of our co-founders. In this uh, AMA, we will be answering all your mining related questions. Uh, so I'll start this uh, with Nilesh. Uh, so the first question here is, which is a very obvious one is, what is our plan for minor components, considering that uh, there is a global semiconductor shortage going on? A uh, great question. Uh, see, the shortage of uh, electronic components is a global phenomena. Every industry uh, has been affected by it. Uh, and there is just no way to procure hardware faster, right? So, so in that sense, uh, uh, there is nothing we can do to procure the hardware. Uh, this, in a way, gives a lot of uh, credence to our decision uh, to fully decentralize miner pool, right? When I say decentralize, what I mean by that is that, you know, uh, no no one should be dependent on a single entity to uh, receive miners, right? It the, the whole thing should be decentralized. Uh, so initial miner pool uh, has already been uh, distributed or it is in stock. So it took a lot of time, but we have uh, you know we have distributed the initial miner pool and we have a stock of almost uh, 50 plus miners so arc ethic will not be distributing any more miners right uh, this would be kind of our initial miner pool anybody anywhere in the world will be able to buy um, something like a yubikey or a similar device which provides a hardware root of trust or a hybrid root of trust and they can join the network as a pending node. So, so you don't need a, a, a special hardware uh, or something that we will pre-program and provide. So once the initial miner pool throughput uh, threshold is reached, what I mean by throughput threshold is that, uh, let's say initial miner pool is of about 100 nodes. And if one node does, I'm just taking a rough example, 50 transactions per second, then the network as a whole is capable of uh, achieving 5,000 transactions per second, right? But if the requirement of the network is even more, then the network will autonomously select new mining nodes according to uh, specific criteria. So, so anyone can join and they'll join as a, as a pending node and the network decides uh, whom to select as a mining node. Thank you so much, Nilesh, for answering that. Uh, the second question, of course, is in, uh, is something that we get a lot on social media as well, uh, which is what is the criteria for someone to be a minor other than the geographic uh, location? See, uh, so it, it follows from my previous uh, answer about the whole uh, threshold throughput, right? So networks are elected based on their availability, uh, the geographical position, and the need of the network, right? So while everyone knows about the geographical position aspect, availability is extremely important. And what we mean by availability is that the network should be connected to a good uh, broadband network, and it should be highly available so that it is up uh, most of the time. Uh, geographical position doesn't need any more explanation. The need of the network is what I meant uh, in my previous answer, that it, when uh, the mining pool reaches the threshold, right, the threshold of the throughput, that is the time it will start selecting uh, and adding more validation nodes from the pending nodes uh, that are already there in the network. So, so, so it is totally the need of the network to scale, and that is how it autonomously keeps adding notes from its pending list. Coming to the next uh, question, uh, Nilesh, uh, which is that, is there a, a waiting list or uh, a way that someone can sign up to be a minor? Uh, so, so, uh, so short answer is right now there is no waiting list, uh, you know, so there is no waiting list to sign up to be minor. Uh, after mainnet bridge activation, uh, you, you know that currently we are in this phase of mainnet and a bug bounty is going on. Once the bridge activation happens and we are fully uh, live 
in production uh, with the bridge activated, which means all the wallets have also moved uh, to our mainnet. Anybody with a device, like I mentioned in my first answer, a device like YubiKey uh, or devices with a key and the basic machine out of trust, uh, we are also looking at, you know, we are also integrating Ledger can be another device, will be able to join the network, right? Anybody who has certain uh, uh, requirements, which are not like a high end machines that are required. So, so whenever a new nodes would join the network, it will be enlisted as a pending node. So during the period, it is still a pending node. It would act as a storage node. Okay. Uh, what I mean by storage is that it will be uh, used by, by the, uh, the, the algorithms, right. Uh, to actually store and it will become a part of some or the other shard. It won't be a validation uh, node. Uh, when the network TPS, uh, by TPS, I mean transactions per second. So again, the throughput, when the throughput threshold is reached, it will trigger new validation node selection from this pending list, right? And it will pick uh, from the pending list based on the uh, earlier mentioned criteria, which is availability and geographic uh, positioning. So to ensure uh, maximum data consistency, uh, network will autonomously select and be able to financially incentivize miners, right? So if you also read our tokenomics paper, you will understand that in a way, network autonomously balances its needs, right? So if the transaction throughput goes up, it, it picks up more validation nodes from pending list. If the throughput goes down, uh, again, nodes go into a pending state and stuff like that. Thanks, Nilesh. Uh, another one question that has come from the community, and I will phrase it exactly like that. Will it be possible to travel with my miner or uh, what is the best practice here? Uh, see, a short answer or is that, yeah, you can travel. But uh, again, going into the mechanism, the best would be to leave it at home. And I'll tell you the reason. The reason is that, uh, like I said, uh, whenever a node joins, it joins in a pending state, then it becomes a validation node, right? Same is true here. If you if you travel with your miner, you are disconnecting from the network, right? And a disconnection from the network means change of IP address. And change of IP address would lead to renewal of the node information, right? So the peer-to-peer -peer network now, in a way, doesn't recognize you, though right uh, you may be the same node so there will be a renewal of node information and you will again go into the uh, awaiting for approval kind of a state when the network will be able to uh, you know kind of autom autonomously select you or join you back so i would say the best would be to leave it at home uh, you don't have to do anything it just needs to be plugged in and it should be connected to the network thank you nilesh and now we will come to the last question uh, that has come from the community, which is uh, how does the network uh, anticipate the increase in the number of transactions uh, per second, considering that one of our objectives is to absorb all the transactions? Okay. So uh, I'm maybe I'll be repeating myself, but there are again two types of nodes in our Catholic network, right? Which is, uh, you know, uh, validation nodes or validating nodes which do um, transaction validation and uh, also store right they'll be part of uh, some storage shard and then there is this whole list of pending nodes which act only as storage right so you have these two types of uh, nodes the the network is designed in such a way that it consumes uh, the mining power based on the current need of transaction processing Right. So, so uh, if the need is for, let's say, 100 nodes, it is using 100 nodes for validation. Uh, if there are in total 150 nodes, then probably 50 are just being used as storage. So now when a surge happens, right, uh, if you if, if suddenly due to some reason, uh, like uh, I'll take my typical example of payments that usually during the festive seasons, there is a surge in transactions, uh, e-commerce transactions, let's say. So when a surge happens, the network will go ahead and convert pending nodes into validating nodes, right? Based on the same availability and geography uh, criteria, right? 
and uh, there will always be a stock of pending nodes in the network. So no matter how fast the TPS increases, the network can easily convert pending nodes uh, as validation nodes and hence keep the uh, network stable and keep processing transactions. Uh, I think we have covered all the questions that have come from the community. So we can end this AMA now. Any other questions uh, relevant to mining, I request everyone that they can ask us on our Telegram channels or on social media. And we will try to answer them as soon as possible. Thank you, Nilesh, for your time. Sure. Bye. No problem. Thanks a lot. Always a pleasure. Bye-bye.